Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live today. It's Saturday, August the 10th, 2013. Our special guest today is Jeff Bradbury, and I'm just going to move on quickly to our opening slide because I want you to know what the topic today is and that it's teacher cast, and we have some excellent ideas and information to be shared, and that's uh, Jeff's uh, uh, website, uh, teachercast.net. I just want to make everyone clear, though, that any of the URLs in the slides are not uh, linkable. So watch the chat because Peggy will be dropping in uh, links for you to follow as we go through the show. And I just want to give a heads up today. Here's your co-host today, Peggy, Kim, myself. Uh, Tammy does closed captioning. And Laurie, who's our uh, assistant with uh, questions and helping uh, some support in the background during the session. And I just want to point out today, Kim is not with us today. We want to wish her well because she and her husband are celebrating their anniversary. So good news for Kim and bad news for us because she's not with us today. We have a live binder. Those of you who are uh, familiar with it, the link is being dropped in the chat any second now. You'll find access to the resources that Jeff is sharing with us today in that live binder. And it's a great place to find out more about Classroom 20 Live. If you're new or a little rusty, just a reminder, we do have a link there for our resources. So if for whatever reason the survey doesn't pop up at the end of our show and you're looking for access to that survey, you'll find it in the resources as well as the professional development certificate reminder. Uh, let's move on quickly to uh, another great resources a reminder. We do have a website live.classroom20.com and the archives and resources page will have everything you need to have if you weren't able to be with us to the show. And I always say send a shout out to your friends because they can come back and enjoy the show because the full Blackboard collaborate recording is there along with an MP3 and embedded video files long and the chat log was pretty terrific because it can move by rather quickly and sometimes it's uh, hard to get those links and you can go back and see the conversation later by going to our iCars plays which is actually a blog page which you can subscribe to in your uh, RSS reader. So I didn't explain how to do this, but everybody remember, we're going to show me where you're located in the world by going to the whiteboard tools on the left-hand side of the whiteboard. The second one down is a little starburst. Just click on it and find yourself in the world. And Peggy's asking me if you're going to explain how to expand the chat window. So let's do the map first, and then I'll quickly go back to that slide to explain about expanding the chat window. So everybody want to get themselves a shot? I'm up here in Canada in St. Catharines, Ontario. Yes, everybody's managed to tell us in the chat. Thank you very much. We always enjoy seeing <laughs> shambles over there in Thailand um, to give us a sense of the global audience for today. So let's uh, take a quick jump back, if we could. a second to get this slide ready for you. Each one of these wonderful little items highlighted in red are panels and you can move them quickly by grabbing onto the title bar and what we suggest to do to expand the chat is to drag it over here on the right hand side because then you can click on the edges and you get a little handle which means you can stretch it out widthwise and lengthwise which is particularly good because as Peggy will tell you that chat window goes by very, very quickly, and uh, it's sometimes hard to miss some of the things that you want to talk about for the day. So I'm just going to get back to where we're going to ask you to contribute again. So if you don't know where that polling uh, icon is, it's just below your name at the right hand uh, icon. If you click on it, you'll get a drop down menu, and you're going to vote today, yes or no. Are you using web videos to engage students in your classroom? And again, if you can't make the polling option work, then please just type in the chat that you are or are not using web videos. So go ahead and I'm going to let you vote and just give you a minute to let people catch up. Okay, let's take a look and see what the results are today. 
that's great news. 50% uh, of those people who are able to make that voting option are telling us that they are using web video. So I know you're going to appreciate the new uh, resources that uh, Jeff is going to share with you today. Okay, I just need to clear the votes and move on to the next poll question, which is, have you listened to, watched, or subscribed to a podcast? I'm sorry, if you started to vote, you have to do it again because I didn't clear the vote. So go right ahead, please, and try again. Thank you for your patience this morning. Let's publish the votes for that question and see the results. A large number of people, 74%, and have listened to, watched, or subscribed to a podcast. Question number three, let me clear the votes here. Have you created your own audio or video recordings which you have used in your teaching? So go ahead and vote now. Yes, you have, and no, you've not with a green check or a red X. I think people are getting the handle of using the voting options. Let's publish the results for that as well. Yes, we can. Some people are, are not able to answer the question, and uh, we'll still see the people who are voting that a large number have actually created their own audio video recordings. OK, wonderful. Thank you very much for sharing your information. It's really a good uh, background for Jeff when he starts his presentation. So this is my opportunity to introduce Jeff Q. And, uh, great detail. He's the creator of TeacherCast.net and TeacherCast University. He's an educational media consultant. He's the director of orchestras in the North Brunswick Township School District where he teaches music theory and music history as well as directs a wonderful high school orchestra that he's very proud of. 2012 just was recognized as one of the top 50 educators using social media at the first ever BAMI Awards. He's also a Google certified teacher. He's a highly respected educational consultant. He's presented at ISTE as well as other nationally recognized conferences and was one of the founding members of EdCamp New Jersey. In 2013, he was honored to be the keynote speaker at the Pearson Authentic Learning Conference. And additionally, the TeacherCast Educational Broadcast Casting Network has served educational medical conventions across the country by providing on-site live broadcasting to thousands of educators each week. He earned his bachelor's and master's degree from Westchester University in Pennsylvania. And in his free time, Jeff enjoys teaching, playing violin, conducting, and spending time with his wife, Jennifer, uh, as they wait for the birth of their first child in 2014. It's kind of an interesting information that we're going to hear something about a little later. So it's my pleasure now to turn the microphone over to Jeff when he jumps on the mic and looks at the newbie question, which has two options here. And uh, I'm not sure which of those two that Jeff is actually going to answer, but I'm going to throw out the first one. and says, how can educators use digital media to entertain and engage students? And he asks again, how can we help our students learn by doing using various types of digital media? Welcome, Jeff. Good morning, I'm everybody. Going to shut my mic off <laughs> and leave you for the presentation. Well, good morning, thank everybody, you. and uh, thank you, Peggy and her team, for uh, setting this up today. It's a uh, honor and a privilege to uh, be able to be a part of the Classroom 2.0 family. So, thank you so much. Uh, let me see if I can get to the next slide here, and. Uh, you know, we're going to talk a lot today about how. Everyone comes up and says, what is TeacherCast? Why are we doing things? What, what can I learn from here? And I, I really wanted to take the time today to talk about how we do things and how you and your classrooms can do things. So I want to say we're going to have a very, very healthy discussion here. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the chat. And, uh, you know, we have some great moderators here today that are going to help out and ask any questions. So even after uh, the, 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 the time is done here in, in, uh, at 1 o'clock Eastern, I will certainly spend any time that we need to around here to answer any questions of how or what or where or 
anything like that. So kind of sit back and uh, feel free to have a good conversation here. I love getting a chance to, uh, to speak to everybody. I want to give a good shout out to my good friend Paula Noggle out there. Hello, Paula. It's nice to see you here. So today we're going to talk all about TeacherCast, and TeacherCast has been, been touted as a lot of different things, but one of the things that I really like calling it is a symphony of educators. It really has turned into a place where teachers can come together and learn from each other, and it's something that I'm very, very proud of. But I first want to start off by just really saying thank you guys. What better place than a situation like here, Classroom 2.0, where people can get up early on a Saturday morning and learn from each other, collaborate with each other, and for free, discuss and learn from each other. I think it's a wonderful thing. So, you know, again, I want to say thank you not only to the Classroom 2.0 uh, crew, but also thank you guys out there for, uh, for coming today, supporting TeacherCast, and supporting your students as we get ready for this new school year. So we want to start off by talking a little bit about TeacherCast. And really, TeacherCast in its core, I, I think, is a multi-level professional development network. Now, what does that mean? Because people all the time ask me, what is it? And the problem with asking me, what is TeacherCast, is I usually have no idea what TeacherCast is at any given minute. Is it a website? Of course it is. Is it a blog? Yes. Is it a podcast? Yes. Is it a mobile app? Yes. Is it having my phone on at all hours of the night and having people call me and asking me how to do WordPress? Yes, it's that too. Um, so today we're going to briefly discuss two questions that, uh, with the hope that we can discuss why it exists and understand how teachers are using it every day to maybe help everybody understand what is actually here and what is here for them. So we have a couple things. We're going to talk about what is TeacherCast and what does it have for you as an educator, but mostly we're going to talk about why. Why does it exist? Why should I use TeacherCast as my source for professional development? So I want to give you guys a little bit of a background here. Um, my name is Jeff. I'm from Philadelphia and just turned 34. I always live in the Philadelphia area between New Jersey and, and Pennsylvania, but I always say I'm a Philly boy. And, uh, we're, we, as we call it here, we're a four for four person. So we're a Phillies, Eagles, Flyers, and Sixers person, no matter how good or how bad. And uh, from the early days, I am a musician. I have my background in, in music education, and I have a master's in orchestral conducting. So what does that qualify me for, for telling somebody how to use an iPad? Those are some interesting questions. Um, I've been an orchestra conductor, I've conducted symphonies, operas, and I've even headlined the main stage at Carnegie Hall, which is really, really cool. And uh, yes, I am married to a wonderful person, and uh, as we're going to talk later, there are triplets on the way. So Paula, yes, triplets. And so um, basically, you, I guess by looking at TeacherCast, you can say I am a goal setter. Um, early on, I was kind of focused on what I wanted to do and how to help out others. Um, at 14 years old, I became an Eagle Scout, which is, you know, pretty cool after three years. And, um, you know, basically when you look at TeacherCast, I kind of have to give a, tap, a, a tip of the hat to my grandfather. I always say that. He was a jack of all trades. He was an Eagle Scout, a Silver Beaver, which means he earned the highest volunteer award you can get. He was a carpenter. He created a ton of woodworking things. And a metal worker, he always had his wood lathe and his metal lathe. He worked at Greaterford Prison. He worked on gyroscopes at MIT. He was a bus driver, astronomer. He built his own telescope from hand. He was a painter, ventriloquist, bad joke creator, but most importantly, he was an entertainer. And so when you look at something like TeacherCast, I can literally sing the song, I am my own grandpa. It literally is that jack of all trades, whether it be blogs, app reviewing, podcasting, broadcasting, live shows, speaking, app developments, or the latest triplets. I am here to entertain people. And I kind of have this motto with TeacherCast and really in life of if you think you can or can't, you're probably right. And so uh, it's just one of those things that if you want to help out people, I certainly think you can. So I want to kind of do a quick runaround of how TeacherCast started and uh, why it's my passion to help out others and, and help out others around the world. So I want to take you on a trip about two years back. and. We can go in the Wayback Machine. I am in my sixth year right now teaching at North Brunswick Township High School, and the building, as you can see here, is beautiful. I'll never forget the day I went down for my interview and saw this campus, and I said, I have to work here. So I'm teaching orchestra. I teach music theory, 
walking into here, I was a PC guy. I loved Windows. I loved what it could do. I always grew up hating Macs because I never understood why they had a one-button mouse. But somewhere in the middle here, my band director told me that we were going to get a Mac lab. And I had no idea that at that point that was going to absolutely change my life um, to what it is now. I learned a little bit about Macs. I learned that there is more than one button on a mouse. I don't understand why it doesn't come like that default, but there is more than one button on a Mac mouse. And uh, after I started to play around with things like GarageBand and iMovie, I was asked to run a summer course with a bunch of fifth graders. And so we talked about how to do that. And I actually ran a fifth grade course for three weeks teaching them how to do iMovie and podcasting, and they loved it. And it was really, really cool watching these little kids run around with flip cams. And it was during that time that teachers kept coming up to me wondering, what was I doing in this Mac lab? Why was it here? What was it used for? What were we doing with things? You know, we don't really, at that point in time, we hadn't really embraced technology yet. So what was I, a music teacher, doing with technology? what were we doing all these things? So we had this whole kind of ecosystem changing and teachers started asking what to do, where to go. Now it was at that same point in time I started to listen to podcasts and I'll never forget the one day where I was driving up to New York and I was listening to this show called Your Mac Show and really what Your Mac Show was, was an educational show but geared for Mac heads and it was basically taking every single button on your Mac and doing a screencast or a something and showing you how to use that. And they were running a contest on one of these shows that I was listening to and I said, okay, I know the answer, I'm going to do the show. So I entered the contest and even though I was a few weeks old in the show, nobody had actually done it. So long story short, um, I won a $50 gift card from this guy named Dennis and him and I kind of became good friends. Actually, to be honest, I didn't leave him alone. And so he brought me on the show as a, as a co-host and a guest and eventually we just had this great big friendship and we decided to start a show called Apple Age where, again, we were talking about computer stuff. But then we had an issue where I was asking a lot of questions and how to do things and just like every mama bird, he kind of pushed me. He kind of said, okay, if you really want to do this, why don't you stop doing my show and why don't you start your own show? And I think as educators, we all need to do that to our kids, right? We all here are for the day to teach our kids how to get up, stand up, and then we push them off at graduation and kind of hope that they fly. And so that was really the start. I kind of looked at this idea of taking every single button on your computer and how do you use it. And I kind of started looking at it and said, how do I take every single button on your computer and show you how to use it in your classroom? Because after all, that's what my, my, what my teachers were looking at. Now the problem with this was that when you're looking at your computer and you're looking at all these different things on your computer, we as educators have an issue. There are so many buttons to push. There's social buttons, there are search buttons, there's gaming buttons, there's crowdsourcing buttons, mobile buttons, RSS buttons. Teachers who don't know how to do these things get really frustrated. So you have a couple options here. People come to you and say, how do you do this? And you can absolutely say, well, you go to A and B and C and D and E. But then you find that if you give us a teacher or anybody many, many, many options to do something, they're not going to want to do it. Am I right about that? If I give you 10 places to go search for things, you're not going to know what to do. You're not going to know all those different things. So we kind of had this problem of what do you do? So I knew one thing, and the one thing that I, I had absolutely no doubt about is that educators wanted to learn. I mean, after all, that's why we're here. That's why we're on social media. That's why we reach out on PLNs and ed camps and things like that. Educators want to learn. They're looking for help. They're looking to help their students. They're looking to help themselves become better educators, and everything here is simply to help make better students or as we call it, more gooder humans. But, you know, there's a little saying here that I really like to bring up when I do these presentations. It's people don't want to buy a computer. They want to know what they can do with it. It's one of my favorite Steve Jobs quotes. They don't want to know about the computer that they have. They just want to know how to do something with it. And we as educators have a very similar tab here. It says teachers don't want to learn how to use the computer. They really are here to learn how to inspire students. And I think we can all agree that we're just here as conduits for knowledge. And so here I was with this, with this 
decision here. We had all these things going on. What apps am I using? What type of activities am I doing? Can you help me with this? I wish there was a class to teach me this. Where can I find? What did I go to find out about? And the most important question was how am I doing these things? And I needed to figure out a way to do this because I didn't want to share with them 10 different sites. I wanted to come up with one place that they can go. So over the summertime, I had two things going for me. I wanted to help out teachers in my school district to help out my class. Again, this was two years ago. I did a final exam in my music theory class where we did a big Google Doc project. The kids had a great time. That was good and that was bad. Why was that both good and bad? Well, it was good because my kids had a great time. They were learning. They were collaborating. They were doing some neat things. We put together a big Google presentation that was actually our study sheet for our music theory final. Well, why was that bad? That was bad because that was the first time these seniors had ever used the term Google Doc. They had no idea what was out there. And so I quickly realized that, okay, I need to do something here to help out my teachers because if my teachers aren't learning this stuff, my students certainly aren't learning these things. And I wanted to make sure that we had great students coming out of our, our high school. And so one night, and I'll never forget it, it was the night of July, July 10th, actually, 2011, I woke up, and it's kind of my Christopher Lloyd back to the future flex capacitor moment. And he, I remember the scene where he says, I had a vision. I had a vision of this flex capacitor. I couldn't sleep that night, and I had a vision. And that vision was this apple, and the apple was holding a mortar board, and I couldn't stop. And I woke up at, well, I didn't sleep that night, but I got out of bed around 2 o'clock. And by 8 o'clock, I had the whole thing situated. I had the domain name. I had the website. I had everything started to go. And I haven't really slept since. Um, there was one catch to all of this. I didn't want to be the, the, the what channel. I, I didn't want to have the three ways to do X. Because teachers don't want to know three apps that do this or five apps that do this. That doesn't help us. They want to learn how. And I think if you're out there listening, you'll realize it's the same idea. It's, I want to learn how to help my kids. I don't want to learn what computer to use. I want to learn how to inspire my kids. So I started writing how. How do I use this app? How do I use my computer? One of my first um, blog posts was to talk about the Mac desktop and how at that point in time it was brand new to have a multiple desktops on your Mac. And I said in my blog post, well, a teacher can take those multiple desktops and set those multiple desktops up with their apps their, their web browsers and everything they need for their class ahead of time. And all they have to do is come in and one desktop is going to be used for first period, one desktop is going to be used for second period, and so on. So that way during the day and in between those five minutes of classes, you can actually focus on your students, not focus on the technology. And that was really, really cool. It was, so my idea was I was going to create a place where my teachers in North Brunswick are going to be able to come and learn, and it was going to be great because we were going to be having a place for my teachers to learn how to use this stuff. And going back with my friend who had told me to go make a podcast, I decided, what the heck, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just going to try this out. So I started the TeacherCast podcast, and my first guest actually said yes. And you have no idea what that's like to actually reach out to a complete stranger because, you know, I was new on Twitter. Who was I? I had maybe 10 or 12 followers at the time. And somebody said, yes, I'll be on your show. So my first guest was actually Steve Wheeler. Some of you might know him. from uh, He's from England. And I also had a friend on named Mark, and he's from Sydney. So here's your first test. You have a brand new podcast. You've never tried this before. And you have to triangulate Philadelphia time, London time, and Sydney time. Go. It's amazing. And I quickly realized one thing here. If my teachers were asking me how to do things and were wondering how to do things, then it is quite possible that the school district next to me and the state next to me were asking the same questions. So through the writings that I was doing of how am I doing things, through the podcast, TeacherCast kind of started very quickly to become a professional development source for educators on a much wider level than I expected. Because Everybody wants to know, how do I help my students better? And so really, that's why I call TeacherCast a place for teachers to help other teachers. It's a place where people can come on the show and share. 
I've had many, I'm looking down the list here, people in the main room, and I've had many people here on the show. And if you have been on the show, please let it on the chat, you know, Paula. I, I want to say thank you to all those who have been supporters, because we can't do a podcast without teachers coming on to share their knowledge. So I've always said that if I ever write a book about TeacherCast, it's going to be called Dumb Luck. Um, my hundredth follower, I thought it was a big deal to get a hundredth follower at that time, but my hundredth follower just happens to be Jason Glass. Now, who is Jason Glass? Jason Glass at that time was the director of education from the state of Iowa. Pretty big deal. So, of course, I wrote him and I was all excited. Hey, congratulations, you're my hundredth follower. Well, that started the chat. And next thing I know, my show went from being a teacher cast through the administrator cast through the superintendent cast. Now I had a director of education chat. And so it was really, really amazing just to see the people come on the show and share their passion, share their knowledge. And you know, one of my favorite stories about just dumb luck is one of my favorite episodes, and I forget what number it is, I had this guy named Steve, and he was a tall guy. And I also had a guy on the show, same show, named Tom. And Tom was the guy that likes to wear these Hawaiian shirts. And the first question that I asked them on the show was, hey, do you guys know each other? I can hear the chuckles coming through my earphones here because maybe you guys know that's Tom, Tom Whitby and Steve Anderson, the creators of EdChat. I had no idea that I had actually booked them on the same show, and I asked them if they knew each other. I was feeling a little silly at the time. But again, dumb luck, things just kind of happen. But the neat part about it is, again, it's universal content that we're starting to create. We're creating this show, and as you can see, from July 2011 through today, it's kind of starting to take off, which is really, really cool because it is becoming an acceptable place for people to learn some. And um, you know, I'm very proud of the attraction that people have to it when really in its core, it is a place for North Brunswick students to learn how to do stuff and North Brunswick teachers. But the fact that it does have this universal pull is, is, I don't know if humbling is the word, but it's really, really cool. And, you know, routinely every week it's seen in 180 plus countries. And it's just really, really amazing sometimes that it's been globally accepted. One of the first things that I wanted to do was to get on a mobile platform. And so in August, again, this is after a month and a half of being alive, um, we opened up our first app. And I, I, my big thing, going back to my grandfather here, is he always did everything himself. He never asked for help. So I wanted to become an app developer. I figured, why not? I was a website developer. I did my own show. Why not be an app developer, too? So I started uh, TeacherCast 1.0. And very quickly, you realize that people like to find stuff mobile. So right now, we're about at half and half. And, and these stats aren't the most updated thing. But it's about half and half, people that use TeacherCast on their iPhones and iPads and people that use it on their desktop. And right now, we're currently actually into phase three, which you can find at teachercast.net slash app. And I'll show you that website later. So we are actually partnered right now with a great um, educational friend called School Info App. And uh, right now, I, I, I kind of realized that app development was a little bit too much for me. So we've kind of passed those duties on to a friend of mine. But uh, School Info App has made us a great app. And the cool part about that is now we're Apple and Android. So here we are. We have this logo. We have this concept. It's a place to, for teachers to help other teachers. Um, this was the original logo that we have. We are now two, I keep talking in third party. Wow, I still talk in third party. But um, TeacherCast really is a we because it's a, you know, again, I say I can't do the show without somebody else. But this was our old logo. Recently, uh, January, February, we updated it to this logo. And, you know, now it's a great place to do audio podcasts, video podcasts, live recordings, app reviews, educational magazines, career center, mobile app iBooks we just came out with, Pinboard. We're actually now doing puppet shows. And I want to give a shout out to my friend Sam who does the Patui Network. We're now working on TeacherCast puppet shows, and we'll talk about that later. Screencasts, workshops, professional development. I just got done doing some keynotes over the summertime. TeacherCast University, and the thing that I'm mostly proud of is TeacherCast.tv. And pretty soon, and I don't have a slide for this, but we're going to be actually launching Baby teachercast.net. So that basically, again, turns this little concept of I want to help out others into really what I call this complete professional development network. And uh, 
it's kind of odd. You know, people say, what do you feel like? How does it work? All these different things. And, you know, I, I, as I said to Peggy earlier, I'm a conductor. And, yeah, I've been on Carnegie Hall stage and I've done all these operas and stuff. But when you're doing that stuff, you really do feel that rush, that passion, that, you know, you have your musicians that you feed off of. You have your audience members. You have rehearsals. You put it together with the violins and the oboes. With teacher cast, it really is doing the same thing. I'm taking educators and superintendents and administrators and, and, and ed tech people, and we're putting it all together onto one platform, and we're creating a symphony of educators. It really, really has been cool. Now, enough about what it is. I want to kind of get into the slides that I'm mostly proud of here, because teacher cast really has had an effect on things. I mean, it is easy to stand up on an opera stage or on a Carnegie Hall stage and look around and see that there's 2,800 people clapping for you and staring at you and seeing that your kids are doing a great job. When you're working behind a computer, you don't feel that. You don't understand how that works until you start seeing, you know, other things kind of happen. You know, people find me now and they, they hear me from across the room. I get this at ISTE a lot. And they say, I heard your voice and I recognized you from across the room by listening to your conversation. And I said, that's scary and creepy. But it really has had an effect on students and teachers and school districts. And let me just kind of explain a little bit here. Um, again, North Brunswick High School is a great place to be and work. I have some amazing kids. And through my relationships with TeacherCast, I've been able to bring in some experts to help out my kids. One of the first things that we did was I had a great show in relationship with Tina and Barbara from Livebinders. And the first year that we were doing this, we had a great opportunity here. And Tina was out um, in the New York, Philadelphia area, and she stopped by North Brunswick. Well, the, slide, the picture here on the left shows her talking to my kids who were using Livebinders in our music theory class. And they started talking to her, and they started asking a lot of questions. And one of the things that came out of that conversation was colored tabs. So if you're using live binders and you're looking at these tabs and it says, well, what color do you want your tab? You can give teacher cast a nod and say that was directly a conversation that happened between live binders and my kids. It was a great little thing. And now my kids realize that they can reach out and talk to these experts. They can change the world. They can change the way your classroom is because of their interactions. That wasn't the coolest part. This picture on the right is actually Tina talking to my guidance department. And right now, my guidance department has the, I think in June it was still the number two guidance, web, uh, guidance live binder in the world. And it had over 5,500 hits or something like that. So if you go to livebinders.com and you type in guidance app or, or anything like that, you probably will come across my school district's live binder for their guidance department where you can find things on courses and military and college careers, all of those different things. And that's a resource that not only is being used by North Brunswick, but also educators worldwide. So again, it's, it's the teacher cast uh, effect, as I call it here, that's, that's being spread. You know, as I'm meeting wonderful people, I'm turnkeying that into my school district and into my classroom, also with the hope that other people in the world might do the same. Here again is my class. This is a different time. We had Digital Learning Day. And this was a, a picture of Digital Learning Day. And you know, as an orchestra director, you don't get a chance to do conferences. You don't get a chance to meet these people. But because I was being exposed to things like Kid Blog, like Skype, like Today's Meet, we put together a completely 21st century classroom here for my music theory kids. On the picture on the left, they're all lined up on their Macs, and they're actually doing a Today's Meet back channel as the girl in the bright orange is actually doing a lesson. So I'm standing in the back room, background. It's a completely flipped classroom experience. The kids are on the computers. Now, that's neat. But what you're not seeing here is right next to the girl in the yellow is the projector cart. And on the projector cart is a friend of mine from Iowa who's Skyping in, asking her questions. So not only is she teaching the kids, but she's also teaching a fifth grade non-music teacher. 
at the same time that's happening, I have a friend of mine from Sydney who's also on today's meet, who is not even an educator, but he's asking questions. So if you actually were to go back and read the chat log, yes, it's about music theory and the circle of fifths, but they're actually talking about koala bears and things about New Zealand. So my kids are quickly realizing there that there are no walls in my classroom. So again, TeacherCast has been able to become this place where I can help out my students because of people like yourself who come on the show and share your knowledge with me. We can then turnkey that back. One of the neatest things that I was able to be a part of last year at ISTE was called the ISTE Project Newbie. And many of you guys know our good friend Jerry Blumengarten. And if you haven't checked out cyberman.com, you don't know what you're missing. But uh, Jerry and I met up at Ed Camp Social Studies. And even though he had been on the show before, we really became good friends. And Jerry just kind of looked at me. He's like, I really want to go out to ISTE. I don't know how to do this. And I said, Jerry, I don't know how I'm going to make this happen but I'm going to get you out there. And again, let's go back to the book title of Dumb Luck. I just happened to be talking to a friend of mine from Oregon, and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do. I, ha I have no money. I can't pay for this guy, but I really want to get this out here. And then Ron went to Beth Still, who, knew, who started the ISTE Newbie program. And so we actually did a fundraiser, and we raised about 70, we had about 75 or 70, about 80 or so, donations brought in and we raised enough money to get Jerry to ISTE for free. That's pretty cool to be a part of and that's pretty cool to kind of be the, the, the lightning rod on that. And, you know, if you were out there and you donated to that, thank you, thank you, thank you. I thought it was awesome. And, you know, it's those little things that we can do to help out other educators. I took the, the idea of helping educators a little step farther and, you know, TeacherCast routinely donates time to ed camps. I love the ed camp movement. We'll talk a little bit about that later. But uh, ed camp social studies was the first ed camp that we sponsored. Now, I didn't sponsor by giving it money. I sponsored by giving it resources. So again, through my connections with all of these app developers, we were able to bring ed camp social studies a ton of free swag because you just start making these connections. And, that, and if you've ever ran an ed camp, that's, it's just amazing and that's easy. I'll always go back to it's all about my kids. It always goes back to I'm here to help out my school district and TeacherCast is, is completely designed around helping make my school district better. And I love the fact that just by having that little goal, you really have been able to help out the world. And, you know, if I haven't said thank you enough to you guys, certainly thank you for that. One of the big things about being at EdCamp Social Studies was, you, again, dumb luck. You never know who's going to be sitting next to you. So I sat down with these two complete strangers, and I looked at them and said, oh, you're from New Jersey, too, and I introduced myself. And they knew a little bit about TeacherCast, but we didn't know each other. We were all strangers. And I just looked at Billy Krakauer, and I said, you know we're going to do this, don't you? And he's like, what do you mean? And at that point, we decided that December 1st of last year was going to be the first Ed Camp New Jersey. And uh, it was really cool. We had about 20 people or so on the, on the, the final, uh, you know, people who were helping us out. We had almost 240 people in attendance that day. And that was just awesome to be able to take those talents of all these educators, put it together, again, symphony of educators here. And it was an amazing time that helped out the entire state. The best part about that is it was held in Linwood Middle School, which is the middle school, which is in my school district. It's the middle school for my school district. So again, I'm able to take all of these different resources that we have and share them back, turnkey them back to my teachers to help out my school district and to help out my students. And we're very proud that next year we're going to be doing EdCamp New Jersey Part 2 on November 23rd. So edcampnj.org. Tickets are going, and they're going very, very strong. So if you can make it, good. And I also understand that there are some good flights coming up from uh, Louisiana. Is that true, Paula? So edcampnj.org would love to see you guys out there. And, and really, in essence, that is TeacherCast. That is the background story. That's kind of how we are here. People say, how do you do it? What do you do? What does it make it run? And, and really, TeacherCast is WordPress, and we're going to talk about this later. You know, one of the big questions people ask is, how do you create this stuff? And it's all done through WordPress. You can take a blank 
WordPress slide and turn it into anything that you can here. And I, I'm, we're going to do a quick demo of it in a little bit. But really, through a, a, a small app like WordPress, you can create blogs and, and websites and portfolios and publications and video archives. And it really just starts like this. And then it can end up with whatever you want. So what I'd like to do is we're going to go into a live screen here. And we're going to pull up TeacherCast. And I want to walk you through a few things here because there's an awful lot of stuff here. And I'm really, really proud of it. Uh, can you guys see my screen right now? Is anybody still alive? OK. So here's TeacherCast.net. And one of the things going into this is I wanted to make a, a, a platform that was not only good on desktops, but was also good on mobile devices as well. And one of the things that I really love doing, and, and my wife rags on me for this, is I will go into any computer store and pull up the, the, the website just to see what it looks like on an iPad, on a mini, on an Android, on a phone, on a whatever. Really, really neat that we can do this. And as you can see, it is set up like the app screen of an iPad. I'm not going to lie about that. But through here, we've been able to take educators all around the world and put them in one spot to help connect each other. One of my favorite pages in all of TeacherCast is my wall of fame. And if you have a chance, it's under the About tab, but if you have a chance to look at this, it really does define Symphony of Educators. You can see everybody here who's been on the show, who's been a writer for me, who's been on the podcast, who's done an app review, and then the neat thing is you can actually hit these tabs and they all fly for you. So I can look at educators, I can, look at, I can look at administrators. And one of the neat things that I'm getting into is I, I kind of realize that educators are nice and administrators are nice, but what about the non-humans? And so we actually created a tab <coughs> excuse me, for the non-humans of TeacherCast. So if you've ever seen a Grog the Zombie commercial from uh, our good friend Toby, Jedi Padmaster, um, and of course we have Waka Patui, the Edufelon and Dewey. We just actually released a great podcast featuring the edu puppets from the Patui network. So that is our wall of fame. You certainly should take a look. It's really, really been amazing. It's, it's, it's a blessing and an honor to see all these people here from like Kevin Jarrett, Shelley, um, you know, Angela, everybody here. Um, let's see, Paula should be on here too at some point. I don't see Peggy George on here yet. Hmm. We should get that on here sometime. So that's our wall of fame. Um, one of the things that I always recommend teachers do as the way out the year, there's an app called Time Toast, which I believe is timetoast.com. And it's, it's a timeline app. It's a really neat timeline app. And you can take it and you can put your timeline on here. So maybe you put a timeline of what are you uh, doing in classroom? When are you doing things? But maybe you do a timeline of the Revolutionary War. So this is a really neat timeline app, and this is about.teachercast.net slash history. Thank you. And um, you can see it in linear view, or you can see it in, uh, in, in list view. But it's really, really neat. And if you kind of want to see where TeacherCast has grown, um, or like where my major milestones are, or even when I've been busy, you can kind of check this out here. So just little things that you kind of put on there for yourself. One of the things that I really like is, is we I was originally calling it the TeacherCast Podcasting Network, but I have recently redesigned this to be the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. You got to check this out, guys. I've got video. I've got audio. I've got everything that you need on here as far as where to find stuff, how to find stuff. And I know this is being a, a great resource. I have all seven of our shows up here, all categorized. And uh, that is podcast.teachercast.net. But we've got everything here categorized. You can watch it. You can check out our live shows. And uh, that is our podcasting channel. Our app review channel is actually the one spot that I honestly don't spend too much time on. But it's actually the one spot that literally gets the most traffic from every single day. Um, again, we started off with how can I use this app? So you know, Dropbox, everybody knows that Dropbox is a cloud-based hard drive. But our reviews come from how am I using it? How do I use a hard drive in the cloud in the classroom? And you know, how do I use Google Drive in the classroom? But I want you guys to take a look at this. And number one, you can, of course, rate it. We had a few people here doing votes. You can do a lot of things to be interactive with this. But up here, we actually did something pretty amazing that nobody really takes the time to find. Yes, we do have TeacherCast written app reviews that 
if you are listening out there and want to join and write your own reviews, I'm always taking requests. But let's say that you happen to be interested in movies and you wanted to find a comedy movie. We've actually taken iTunes and fed iTunes through TeacherCast. So this is a whole bunch of comedy movies that run through iTunes. So if you're looking for a good movie tonight, you can go to TeacherCast and find it. If you're looking for podcasts on higher education, you can actually go through here. Now, these aren't reviewed, but they're all running through here. So if I'm looking for a good podcast, after listening to all the TeacherCast ones, I can check this out. And let's say I'm looking for some educational podcasting on training or language courses. They're all here. And the same thing with books. You've got paid books. You've got free books. And, you know, please use this as a resource. It's a place for teachers to help other teachers. And let's just take the host here from Stephanie Myers, because I know that's one that my wife probably read a couple times. This is completely from iTunes. I didn't write this. This is completely from iTunes. But what you can do is you can come down here and leave a message. You can review it right here on TeacherCast for others to read. So we certainly love getting the, um, the interactive here. And if you're looking for some great apps, we have a list of our TeacherCast must-have apps. I certainly recommend you checking out TeacherCast Pro. One of the other big features of TeacherCast is our Live Binders Gallery. I'm very, very proud of this. This is the second one. This is like the second biggest place hit on TeacherCast. I've actually been able to work with Barbara and, the, and Tina into creating this. Nobody else has this. So let's take a look at uh, Administrator Live Binders. And this here is more than 10, I think last time we checked the number, it's more than 20,000 Live Binders are held on here. And so, if you're looking for a subject, let's say binders that have to do with uh, English, you can check on this. And as you can see, there's more than 1,000 pages of live binders here that you can see. And anything that you're looking for is completely here. So check out that live binders. You can search through it because this is all done through the TeacherCast network. And uh, if you'd like to have your live binder featured on here, we certainly can do that. We have a place for that on here as well. And so that is our live binder set. Many people don't realize that in addition to audio and video, we also have a blog. And TeacherCast, I don't know if you want to call it the blog, the educational magazine or something, I actually have over 60 educators writing for us right now. And if you're looking to share your stuff, I want to talk to you. It is a place for teachers to help other teachers. And I'm, every single page that I'm showing you, I want you to keep that in mind. It's a place for other teachers to come together and share their stuff. So we have tons of writing on anything from ed camps to edu coaching to administrative to here's our app reviews, here's our you know professional development stuff, social media. You can see we have our featured writers here. And from the who's who in education to the teacher who just started a blog, this is a great place to come here. And uh, it is an amazing resource that I'm very, very proud of. We have over I know most of the big blogs that you can think of out there very, you know, tout that they put out two or three blog posts a day, and TeacherCast usually does about eight to 15 blogs a day because it's from educators at all subject levels, grade levels, and there's a couple wonderful things going on here, such as you know, our interview, and there he is, our interview with Waka Patui, who's right now at EdCamp San Francisco Bay. So check us out on blog.teachercast. But we have a great learning platform here. And I know we're quickly running out of time, but if you're looking for screencasts, we also have that. You can watch them. You can look at them. You can comment on them. Let me get rid of this. Educational movies, all of our broadcasts, and we'll talk about broadcasts in a second, are posted up here. My favorite one is always, always, always going to be the Steve Jobs crazy ones, if you've ever watched that. Our app, again, is Android, iPhone, completely redone by School Info app. Love those guys. And um, check that out. It is free. It is a free resource that has all of TeacherCast going through it. Pinboard. I never understood Pinterest. How many of you guys out there have a Pinterest account? I would love to talk to you guys because I don't understand Pinterest. But I believe one thing. If you can't beat them, join them. So I completely redesigned Pinterest and created the TeacherCast Pinboard. So if I scroll down here a little bit, they should start to pop up. And really what this is is Jeff's way of organizing things. I used to uh, find great links and email them to myself. Didn't work too well. 
And so right now you have the teacher cast pin board, which is really a categorized collection of my thoughts. You can find blogs, uh, educational camps, technology things. Um, many people come down here to WordPress because I have all of my WordPress links on here. And of course, it's all done by tags. You can check that out. One of the things that I'm really, really proud of, and I said that a lot so far today, is TeacherCast University. It is really a spot where you can come and learn from. And I'm going to be completely redesigning this page soon. But uh, I've been getting into a lot of keynoting and presentations and ed camping and, and, and on-site broadcasting. And we just started yesterday again with TeacherCast University where I re recorded a four-part series on how a student can create their own mobile app using a great pl pl platform called AppShed. So look for that soon. Um, one of the things that we're actually going to be working on here is creating online courses. I have an online course up right now. Um, it's teachercast.net slash iPads for everyone. And uh, it's a 22 video course on iPads. And I'm working on one right now. It's 50 videos on how to do WordPress and how to make a site like TeacherCast. So TeacherCast University is a great place to learn about how you can bring my, me out. Um, you can see a picture of me here at the BAMIs last year broadcasting with Chris Lehman. Lots of great stuff on TeacherCast University. Sunday nights at 7 o'clock live, we do the Tech Educator Podcast. So I want to give a shout out to my friends Jeff Herb, John Samuelson, and Sam Patui, um, Sam Patterson. And if you want to catch us live every single Sunday night, we talk about the latest and greatest in ed tech. But they're all webinar discussions. So it's not a conversation. It's more of a demonstration. The last two weeks, we've been talking about videos and screencasts. This week, we're actually going to have a live demonstration of how you can use a green screen in your school. So a lot of people want to know about green screen techniques, techeducatorpodcast.com. Um, I wouldn't be where I am without trying to give back to the community. So we have a career center. It works. If you have a job that you want to post, Let's talk. And if you are looking for a job, you can type in anything, any location, and you can actually find a job through TeacherCast. If you're looking to figure out what kind of equipment that we use, you can go to teachercast.net slash Amazon. And here is our Patui site. Here's the wonderful and beautiful Kristen Swanson with Waka. But that is at patui.teachercast, and I'm going to be adding that to the home page. Um, I, I, I can keep going here. But our YouTube site is doing really, really well, teachercast.net slash YouTube. Last week, we popped out our first ever iBook, which is teachercast.net slash iBook. And basically, this is the iBook version of TeacherCast. Talks about our mobile broadcasting and all the different channels. We actually just put an update in for that, and we're expecting that to become soon. Ah, there it is, actually. What's new in version 1.1? I guess the book has been, uh, has been updated. Um, one of the neat things about being a, a source of information is that you're able to share it with others, right? That's why we're here for. So there's a great resource called EdShelf. If you've never gone to EdShelf.com, you need to. It is like the, the holy grail for information other than TeacherCast. But you can come into here and say, look, I want to search for a blog. And it gives you all the EdTech tools on blogging. And the cool part about this is as I'm doing these shows, right down here on EdShelf, you are actually seeing the TeacherCast podcast. So you can learn about a system like Instagram, why it's wonderful, and then down here on the right side, you can actually listen to my podcast with Instagram. And so you're going to be seeing a lot of that stuff spring up. Here's one on Instagram. Again, here's School Info app. And right here is our video that we did on Sunday nights. There's John. And then down here, you can see that TeacherCast has a show on it. And again, here we go with Ed Camp, New Jersey. So in a nutshell, and I know I'm, I'm running through this, Peggy, because it's almost 1 o'clock, that is TeacherCast. And uh, you know, I'm very, very proud of it. And I know we're running short. I have a lot more slides for everybody if they want to learn what kind of equipment, because people always ask me about podcasting equipment. But we can, uh, we can do a little wrap up here, Peggy, if you want to, because I know we're going to have a hard out soon. And then when we come back, I'm, I'm here for questions. I see the chat box is moving. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I'm going to pop, pop right in there and go, wow, 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 wow. I can't believe what you've got.
here, and I think people in the chat have just been uh, blown away with what you've got. Congratulations, you know, you've worked really hard and it's got a great team going. You're right. What I'd like to do just now is do our formal close up because some people can't stay. I know you've got some more slides, more information to share, so maybe we can just do that after I, I do the official close out, which means I'm going to move forward on the slides a little bit, and I need you to stop sharing, if you could, please. I will or do I'll that do as you. soon as I can figure out how that works. <laughs> I'll, <laughs> very, I'll stop Here it. We okay. Yeah. We're good. Okay, back to the slides. Thank you very much. So I don't know how to express how great it is to find this all in one spot. And I think you've done everybody a great service because of that, you know, making the nucleus for all of us to uh, come to. So here's the closeout. Laura usually takes our questions, so Laura, I'm going to again do the formal closeout, um, let uh, Jeff talk, and then if you're able to collect the questions at that point, we'll go ahead. But I'm thinking we should really look about quarter after the hour to see that we'd be able to collect questions. Or, or you know, Jeff, if you want to collect the questions as we're as you're doing your finish your presentation, you could do that as well. You need just talk to me in a minute about how you want to handle that. So <laughs> congratulations, and, and that was Peggy's supposed to come to the mic and, and tell us da 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 the, about the, the, the there they are that you've gone ahead and done. <laughs> yeah, isn't that great? We're, we're, they used to be called A, B, and C, and now they're called 1, 2, and 3. 1, 2, and 3, that's great. Congratulations again. Okay, folks, I always want to give uh, a quick rundown of the Future of Education shows, and I know that you know we do have a calendar on our website under the calendar section. You can also keep track of the uh, interviews that Steve is running. I know the 20th of August on Tuesday, and Mickelson and Connected Learners. You'll move on to Tuesday the following week, the 27th, and Dave Marzak on self Design. Self-designed education running into September, uh, September three, two thousand. Excuse me, Tuesday, September three. We've got Michelle Cordy on hacking your classroom. Then on the tenth, we have Doug Johnson on the indispensable librarian. And on our shows, we've got a, a list of great people coming up. Next week is Shelley Terrell. She'll be talking about teaching and listening tools and apps with a special focus on English language learners and English is a second language, uh, but it's great for all students. And our featured teacher will be August 24th with Louise Morgan. We won't be having a show on the 31st of August, Labor Day here in Canada, United States. Then, so we'll be back on September the 7th with Colleen King in the math playground. We've got a few more people on the list that we're going to keep uh, in our pocket till we get them. To get farther on into the month of September. Just a reminder about nominating a featured teacher. That's how we found Louise, and we found many of our featured teachers. There is a form uh, that you can fill out. Again, it's in the live binder under Classroom 20 Live Resources. Please go in and submit any names that you think we'd be appreciated on our show. Again, at the end of this session, when you close your browser, you get a pop-up window, and that's the survey. And so in the survey, you can give us some feedback on today's presentation, which we know is wow, wow, wow. But then there is a place for you to put in your email address, and uh, Peggy will send you out a professional development certificate uh, that's pertinent to today's show. That certificate is also good for people who were not able to attend our show and did watch the recording, and they can close out the recording and they will get the same opportunity. Just to remind that the, the, the professional development certificate is for you to take to your um, own school district and see where it applies. We have you know, no authority in providing professional development certificates, but they are a great resource to collect and we have to send a great appreciation. Peggy does this safely every week. Sometimes she has a bit of a trouble, though, if you're using your school board email address. We have spam filters knocking them out. So we would suggest that you use your own personal email to get that certificate. Uh, our iTunes U channel, we have a video and audio collection so that you can subscribe to them as well. And uh, I talked to you again in the beginning about our blog page. It's our archives and resources page. They have an RSS feed that you can uh, subscribe to as well. Here's my opportunity to officially thank Jeff for a fantastic presentation today. Steve for being our founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and Web 2.0 Labs project. Uh, to Weebly for providing our 
website support and to Blackboard collaborating, providing us the platform in which we can meet every Saturday. So, and all of you who are here with us in the show, taking Saturday off and showing, sharing your ideas, we appreciate your attendance and your faithful support every week. So, I think that's quickly everything that I needed to talk about. So, Jeff, you just want to give me a a heads up on how you want to uh, handle the questions and the rest of your presentation. What would you like to do? I'd like to take every question and then answer it all at once. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> now? Right now? I, I'm, <laughs> right I, now? I, I'm, I'm here. I'm not going anywhere. So I'm, I'm okay. here for all questions. So let's, we're just asking Lori in the chat there were the questions that um, Jeff, she has a few. So, okay, Lori, you take the microphone and you and uh, Jeff can work through them, okay? All right, thanks, Lorna. Um, first one that I have is what the name of the Timeline app was. Time Toast. Time Toast. OK, that thank is, you. And that was a tip that I got from Jerry, Cyberry Man, who says, if mm -hmm. you're going to start this, just every, every day, every week, you know, record what you've done, because you're going to want to go back and see where things are. So. Like every 500 Twitter accounts, I pop it onto the time toast. And every time I do a big interview, I put it, I put it on there. And like this, this interview today, I'm going to put it up there. So that way, you know, you, you, you don't realize that you're building things for somebody that you've never met before. But it is kind of cool that now I've got a record of the last two years, especially with the triplets coming, that you can go back and say, look at what, what, what happened. Mm -hmm. So it, it's kind of cool. Someone asked, how did you find the movies? Um, how did I find the movies? How uh, do you find the movies? Meaning what? Meaning on the app review page, how do I get them up there? Um, all I have is the question itself. Heidi okay. asked the question. Heidi's still in the room. She may be able to, to clarify the question. There is, uh, uh, if, if the answer is how did I get the, uh, the movies and stuff on the app review page, um, Peggy, I can get this link for you here, but there is actually a website that Apple has for everybody that you, okay, here it is. Um, boom. They actually allow you to generate RSS feeds from their iTunes. It's not a secret. So it's a lot of hard work because you have to organize it and figure out what you want. But mm -hmm. I've got about 55 or so um, iTunes RSS feeds coming in. Anybody can do that. Okay. Uh, a, a new question. I have a couple others here. Uh, in TeacherCast University, how do you sign up or purchase a course? Uh, someone went right to the now, site, but it wasn't working. Good question. Right now, there is one course up there. It's on a platform called Udemy, which is U-D-E-M-Y dot com. And Udemy is a great place to find online courses and whatnot. And right now, I think I have it on sale for like 15 bucks. Um, but I'm currently working on a, on a WordPress version of that because much like the pin board, I don't want to give my hits to Pinterest. I'd rather give my hits and my analytics to TeacherCast. So mm -hmm. eventually, um, this was actually the plan for the summertime until I learned about the triplets, that I was going to be building out this uh, learning management system on TeacherCast. So it's there. And maybe the next time I'm, I'm, I'm asked to come on this program, we can talk about how to build a learning management system. But mm -hmm. um, you know, there's uh, it's, it's learn.teachercast.net, but honestly, there's nothing on the page at this point. It's mm -hmm. it's all done behind a hidden wall. So I mean, it's not even worth sharing the link, but it's there. But eventually, you should you will be able to quote go to TeacherCast and sign up for these courses, and all of my screencasts and stuff will flow through that. That's mm -hmm. the big picture here. I'd like you to come to TeacherCast and literally learn something and do the blogs and do the reviews and, and TeacherCast University is just kind of going to become this umbrella and, and it's going to flow through with the broadcasting. I, I did this whole entire webinar without even talking about broadcasting. Wow. <laughs> that, wow. Um, okay. Shambles had a question. How would you, would you see TeacherCast being used with CMS, LMS, social networks such as Edmodo? I just did a show that I popped out last week with Edmodo where they came on and they talked about EdmodoCon. And so if you're asking, uh, I, I know you're not asking this as a question, but if you're saying how would TeacherCast work with Edmodo, the answer is it already has and the show was wonderful. Um, 
but how would it integrate? It's a way to learn. You know, I have a lot of people who have written about how to use Edmodo. I now have a video for how to use Edmodo. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we talk about with our students is that they learn in three ways, audio, video, kinesthetically, right? Audio, physically, you know what I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. We as adults are just taller versions of that. So with TeacherCast, I really created a place where you can learn by reading, learn by listening or viewing, and then learn by physically doing, whether it be coming to my workshops or, or taking an iBook or listening to a podcast or reading about it. If you want to take Edmodo as an example, you can literally listen to it, hear it, see it, feel it, touch it, and the whole thing. And I try to do that for all the topics. And that's only because there's a lot of educators that are coming to this and sharing their information. And again, I'll say if anybody here wants to share their stuff on TeacherCast or be a guest on the show, I'd welcome that. And you are, you are always the expert on TeacherCast. Actually, somebody did ask that question about a, and I think it was an English course um, that the teacher had created. She said it was connected with Classroom 2.0, but wanted to know how to connect it with TeacherCast. Um, if anything specific like that, just I, I stuck my email address in there. Those specific things would be a, a little bit more of in depth of a question. But I have no problem sure. talking and emailing and phone calls, and that's why I'm here. Thanks. And if, you go, to, if you go to teachercast.net, here's one, Peggy. Teachercast.net slash voicemail, you can leave me a voicemail, and I'll always answer it either on a show or on Sunday night with the Tech Educator Group. Great. I've got two other questions that I captured. Uh, what was the name or the link for the mobile app creator? Um, AppShed.com is an amazing one that allows you and your students to create mobile apps for both Apple and Android. You don't have to have them on the um, App Store. Um, Check me on that one, Peggy, but I think that's the link to the show that I did with them. And like I said, we recorded a four-part series yesterday that eventually is going to be a 20 or 30-part, you know, how do I make a mobile app with my students? So we did a mm -hmm. thing on how to do Google Docs, Google Presentations, Google Calendar in your, sh in your app. We talked about how to put Facebook and Twitter in your app. So it's going to be a, going with the TeacherCast University theme, it's going to be a multi-course video series of how to make a mobile app. Okay, thanks. And someone asked about Patui. Could you restate the information about Patui? Patui is an amazing roller coaster. Sam Patterson is a diehard educator from from California who is has his doctorate in poetry. I think I'm getting that right. But Sam is a great, great source of inspiration for me and pushes me to no ends to get things done here. And he started creating these puppets. And the first one was named Waka. And Waka looks like, uh, he looks like a rag with eyes. Don't tell him I said that. Mm -hmm. and, and Waka is the national spokes puppet for Patui and for TeacherCast. And right now, Waka is at Ed Camp San Francisco Bay teaching other people how to do puppetry and green screens. And Sam has created a family, <laughs> I love that word, a family of puppets. And they all have different personalities and Twitter addresses, by the way. And so, you know, we are currently creating the Patui Network, which is patui.org. And that leads you to patui.teachercast.net. But uh, Sam runs the Patui Network, and on Tuesday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern, um, he runs the Patui Chat, which originally started off as bringing in educators and doing a live show, and it's really, really morphed into so much more than that. So, you know, he's, if you're interested in edu puppets or, or kind of that avenue, he's always looking for guest writers, and he's one of my bestest, bestest, nearest, dearest friends, and he is also on the Tech Educator podcast with me. So if you're watching tomorrow on Sunday at 7 o'clock, you know, usually we talk with everybody about a topic, and then Waka comes on, and I kind of relate him to Kermit the Frog, because Waka has actually been the pre-keynote address for things like the Blackboard, uh, what did they just have, the Blackboard something something out in, in Las Vegas? So he was out there doing interviews. He's, he's actually interviewed George Koros a few times. He's interviewed Adam Bellow a few times. 
and now he's presenting at EdCamp. So uh, Waka Patui is uh, quickly getting around, and I think he's got almost 300 Twitter followers at this point. Hmm. Thank you. Those, those are the questions that I captured. I, I have a question. Did everybody enjoy themselves today? <laughs> what are the numbers for? Their hand raises. They're, they're either questions or. Um, Thank you, Paula. Just telling yes, 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 yes. <laughs> the different different um, formats. Some I, with votes, some with smiles. I, I, I want to say thank you. Um, I, you know, get starting this whole thing with Peggy a few weeks ago. I, I told her I don't like talking about myself. So this was really, really amazing to be able to get on here and kind of tell the story and, and kind of go back and forth. And it, it's even more amazing because I have this on recording now, especially moving forward into baby world. So I, I really, really appreciate it. Um, thank you, Peggy. Thanks, Steve Hargadon. Thank you, Classroom 2.0. And, um, and, and thank you, Paula, and everybody else out there for supporting TeacherCast. Please tell your friends. Please check it out. Please let me know. If you need educational broadcasting, I will come to you. If you need a keynote speaker, I will come to you. Um, yeah, I'm having fun with this, and I love it. There's one comment went through in the chat. I think you answered that question. Catherine was asking about the world language on language uh, information that you shared, and I think you said to Catherine, use your, your email, Jeff, so that you can be talking about how to make that linkage to teacher cast. That's one last question that, that I saw. You can and find me. This is, this is you were t talking. I, I saw that one pop up again, so I hope that helps Catherine with her question. Mm -hmm. I know you have quite a few slides there as supplement to today's show, but I'm suggesting that you know we put people into one of your other um, podcasts that talk specifically about broadcasting, because I think we've pretty much come to the close of the show, and I know it's hard to stop talking about something that you're totally excited and it's hard for me to stop listening to something I'm totally excited about, but we are getting uh, close to our, what we call our optimum time <laughs> on the recording and publishing. So I think we're, we're going to say thank you very much for everyone in the chat for sharing and attending uh, with us today. And most of all to you, Jeff, for giving of yourself. And I think to your wife as well for sharing you as much as she, as she does to this world of teacher education. So thank you very much. Reach out to her and at we'll Base Gen 1 and say hello on Twitter. <laughs> OK. We'll look forward to seeing everybody next week at the same time to talk to Sherry Terrell. So thanks very much, everyone, and have a good weekend.